I am Carly, and I am from Idaho, and I was thinking about what it, what it was like for me to decide to serve and kind of the path to me coming to be a missionary. I was the person that never wanted to go on a mission. I was, I believe I was 16 years old when the age change happened, and everybody's like, oh, I'm going on a mission, and all my graduated friends were, I'm going on a mission, and I'm so excited, I get to serve, and I was just kind of like, that's so cool that they changed the mission age. I'm still going to get an education. I'm still so focused on college, and I just never really considered it as an option. When people asked me about it, I immediately would shut them down, and it wasn't until I had all my life planned out. I was going to go to BYU. I was going to be a math teacher. And everything was set. Um, I had read the script Book of Mormon. I did personal progress three times when I was a young woman. I did it once as a beehive, once as a my maid, once as a laurel. I knew the Book of Mormon. I knew the scriptures. It wasn't like I felt like I wasn't going to know the material as a missionary. I was kind of worried about like food and culture and stuff. But honestly, I just thought that it was going to be something that took more time out of my life and I had my life set for BYU and I got accepted and I also applied to BYU-Idaho just in case and I came down during a dance competition and toured BYU um, for, while we were here for nationals and I loved the campus, I was so excited and then a week and a half later we went up to Rexburg, I went up to Rexburg with my mom and I just felt the spirit at BYU, and I just felt the spirit so, at BYU-Idaho, the spirit so strongly told me I needed to go there, and I ended up changing my major while I was there, and everything was crazy, and dating life was crazy, as you can imagine, in college, and I had all the crazy BYU-Idaho dating experiences, and I kind of reached this point where I needed to change my major, and I didn't know if BYU-Idaho really had what I wanted, but I didn't understand why the Lord would send me to BYU-Idaho first, and... I prayed really hard, and one day I was waiting for my chemistry class to start. I was sitting on a bench in the Romney building at BYU-Idaho, and I prayed with all my heart. I was Heavenly Father, I need to know what I need to do with my life. I need to know. I need to understand if, I can, right now I'm writing, or getting ready to work out papers to transfer to BYU. I'm applying there again. Like, what do you want me to do? And I... I had no intention of receiving any kind of like incredible revelation, but I just thought I'll read through my patriarchal blessing because that's where I always find peace. And I had had my patriarchal blessing since I was 14. And mind you, I was almost 19. I was 18 years old. It was February, around like February 9th, February, the beginning of February of 2015. I'd been at college for a semester. And I was halfway through my second semester of college. And I'd had my patriarchal blessing for almost five years and, well, four and a half years. And I was, I was pretty sure I knew what was in there. And I started to read after that prayer. And there was a whole section just about serving as a missionary from, like, head to toe. Like, it was just instantaneous. I knew 100% I had to go on a mission. And I knew that there was going to be no way for me to get out of it. There was going to be no way that I could deny that I had to serve the Lord. And I started crying. I started sobbing because I was so scared. And it was so not the plan that I had in mind. And it was just so different from what I was planning. And I cried. And this sweet girl came up and she's like, I just got home from serving. I believe she served in Japan. And she just talked to me about how much she loved her mission. And I'm going to be honest, it didn't really calm me down anything. I tried to call my mom. She didn't answer, so I sent her a text. I went to class, and I got out of class. I had like a million missed messages from her because she was like, what? And I knew I had to go on a mission. That was That's what I, need, I needed to do. So I got my paper started that night. We had a ward activity, and it all went pretty fast. Um, I knew I needed to finish my associate's degree because I was still planning on transferring and everything. And I got my mission call in May, and I started dating someone pretty soon after. And it got pretty serious. 
Um, we had talked about marriage, um, but I knew that I needed to serve, but it was so hard because I didn't know. He was a return missionary. didn't really seem like he would wait for me. Like It didn't really seem like that would be an option because he was just ready for that next step, and I was just in a position where I could go either way. And it took a lot of prayer. It took me about a month and a half or more, almost. I think it was actually about two months. Yeah, it took me about two months to accept my mission call. It hurt my heart to not know that that's what I needed to do, but to know that that's what I needed to do. And it was finally just one day I was sitting there, and I knew my Heavenly Father. I was in Doctrine and Covenants 6 where... God says to, I believe it's all of Calvary. I'm sorry, I'm a missionary. I should have this memorized. That, or I'm not a missionary, a return missionary. I use it a lot in my mission. Just the, um, what greater, I like, cast your mind upon that night where you receive that witness. And like, what better answer can you have from, from God? And I knew I had to accept it. And I wrote my acceptance letter right then. I told my boyfriend, I'm, I'm leaving, I'm going. And he's like, hey, I'm, I can't wait for you. I will try. I'm going to date other girls, and I'm not, I'm not going to promise you anything. And it was hard, um, but I knew it was right. And so I left. Um, my sister got married right after the semester ended. I graduated. Everything was crazy. I left September 9th of 2015. My call, going back a little bit, was to Modesto, California, I wanted to go stateside. Um, that was something that was really important to me, was to not not go foreign. <laughs> um, I really wanted to serve stateside, um, just because I always knew, I knew that if I went on a mission, I wanted to be able to go back and visit it easily. And I had this kind of list of, okay, Heavenly Father, if I want to serve a mission, or if I'm going to serve a mission, it has to be somewhere where it's warm but not too hot, where it's not super cold, it's not going to snow, I am not going to freeze to death, I'm not going to gain a ton of weight, there's not going to be a bunch of like super crazy foods and stuff where I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't eat this, like I need to have pretty good access, <laughs> pretty good access to Walmart or just like simple things and to my family, then it's not going to make, I, I want some cool experiences, but um I didn't want it to be on a coast, I didn't want it to be super humid, and in all the crazy messed up ways that it could be, Modesto, California perfectly fit all of those things, that it was just the perfect place for me to serve, and I, I loved it so much, I didn't know where it was, um, it was a brand new mission, um, so when I think about entering the MTC, um, I was really nervous about entering the MTC, to be honest. My parents dropped me off, and I remember saying goodbye to my mom. And I, I mean, you know the Book of Mormon's true. You know the gospel is true. You know that's why you serve a mission. And I said, I gave my mom the biggest hug. I was like, Mom, and we're both crying because it's an emotional thing to leave your parents. And Mom, I wouldn't leave if it weren't true. And she looked me straight in the eye, and then she gave me the tightest and like most gentle, firm hug I've ever had in my life. And she said, and I wouldn't let you. And those words stuck with me throughout my mission that like, even in moments where I didn't understand why I was serving a mission, like, why did I leave? Why am I leaving my family? I, my mom knew that the gospel was true, and she let her youngest daughter leave for a year and a half after having 19 years of never having to worry about that and then suddenly in a six month period she was gone and it was just so incredible to me that that faith that she had and that really took me through the MTC when I wanted to leave and there was an investigator in the MTC that I had that she didn't have anyone. She thought she was worthless. She didn't think she was worth anything, and I just felt so honored to tell her that the Lord loved her, and that Heavenly Father loved her, that she was a child of God, that He cared about her, 
that he had scriptures that were meant just for her, for her to feel that love, that there was so much like awaiting her. And it changed my mind, my outset, that I wasn't here for myself, or I wasn't here to lead my family, that I was there to change other people's lives. And it really shaped the rest of my mission.